What's up guys, just a quick heads up that the music was blocked in this video due to copyright, so I have muted the audio. However, I have provided a link to the song in the description, so you can open a new tab and listen to the song alongside with my reaction. Or you can just join me on Patreon for unedited footage. But for now, enjoy the video guys. What's happening everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for being here. Hope you're having a lovely day. We are going to listen to Fleetwood Mac. We're going to finish out their album Rumors uh, with the second side of the album. Uh, now, before we get into it, I'm going to skip The Chain. And if you're wondering why I'm skipping The Chain, it's because I had already listened to that song on this uh, on the channel. So if you want, you can go back and watch that video. Uh, but we're going to omit that for now. And we're going to listen to the other songs. We're going to listen to You Make Loving Fun, I Don't Want to Know, Oh Daddy, and Gold Dust Woman. And then, as I mentioned in the last video, we had also listened to Silver Springs, so you can find that video if you are so inclined. But I'm recording this video a few days after I've listened to Side One here with you guys on the channel, and I don't, you know, I don't, I can't see any of the comments because that video hasn't come out yet. <laughs> but I hope that you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed listening to Side One, and even though the music did get blocked, you know, as always, there's always a link to Patreon if you want to watch the full thing. It's available free and for everybody. I mean, you can't really. Can't really make it better than that. <laughs> I can't unblock the music. So I uh, hope that you guys enjoy it. But let's go ahead and get into it. Like I said, we're going to start off side two, skipping the chain uh, and listening to You Make Loving Fun. So let's do it. Let's go. Coming off of the western tumble of rock and folk from The Chain, I think that this is like the perfectly crafted and perfectly blended pop song, taking elements from before and just smoothing it all out, glossing it all over with this wonderful pop uh, like sheen on top of it. But man, do I love what Christine's doing. I love Miss Christine uh, McVie, uh, the organ, the piano. First of all, the mix in the verse is just very, very nicely put together, very astounding. And then the guitars, once those come in from Buckingham, it's just all over from there. <laughs> the vocals are, are smooth and airy and they're very light. The harmonies in the chorus uh, flow and move very nicely. This is to me like just the perfect uh, little pop song. I love the way that the drums pick up uh, in the chorus. Boom, 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 boom. Just a little bit. It's just a little bit of a door knock, and then you open it up, and you're just greeted by glorious harmonies and melodies uh, from the band. Let me pull it back near the verse, maybe around here. See, right in there, the organ, too, amongst the bass, it feels right. And that's what I mean, like, Christine, I mean, she's handling the piano, clavinet, organ, and then the lead vocals. She's like the star. <laughs> like, to me, she's the star of this. You even got some castanets later on. Uh, that's not, that's probably not how castanets sound exactly. And then Buckingham does get down a little bit in here. And I like that in this track, he does have a few more moments of like guitar greatness. He, you know, he goes into the, the back end of the track with a little bit of tick, 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 like a little bit of that, giving you a little bit of that, that chunking feeling. And then the solo, of course, it, it feels right feels natural and as I mentioned it's a nice progression off the back of the chain which brings like a nice western theme to it kind of opens up the second side of the album with a little bit of a slow more uh, uh, dusty driven kind of sound before we move into you make love and fun speaking of you make loving fun let's talk about the lyrics on this one sweet wonderful you you make me happy and the things or with the things you do Oh, can it be so? This feeling follows me wherever I go. I never did believe in miracles, but I have a feeling it's time to try. I never did believe in the ways of magic, but I'm beginning to wonder why. So, this is relating to love. You make loving fun. She didn't have fun loving before. Now, she's met this person, and all of a sudden, loving is actually a pleasure. Loving is actually fun. Not just something that perhaps uh, they found themselves stuck in. A bad relationship. Everyone else said that they had love and everyone else is in love and they felt lonely so they just kind of sacrificed their 
What's the word? They, they, they lowered their standard. I don't know. But they did meet this one person that said, wow, maybe I should start believing in miracles because you, you make loving fun. Don't, don't break the spell. It would be different and you know it well. You, you make loving fun. And I don't have to tell you, but you're the only one. Don't ruin this. Don't break this spell. You got me mesmerized right now. Let's stay, Jon Snow and Egret. let's stay in this cave. Hey, let's move on to the next track from there. I don't want to know. What don't you want to know? We're about to find out. This song, I Don't Want to Know, has me actually a little bit mixed. Honestly, I didn't like love. This one feels like a little bit fillerish to me. It doesn't hit to me the same chords that the other tracks have. And I would say as of right now, on a first listen, this is the weakest track I've come across so far. Now, on the other hand, it's still well put together. It's still well built musically. But I do think that it's missing a certain spark. I do think it's missing uh, something to kind of take it above as the rest of the album has been like a little bit more above. This is kind of filler. There's nothing really standing out to me. Yeah, the singing's nice. Yeah, the guitar is nice. Yeah, the, everything's nice. It's okay. I just feel like it's not living up to the same standard as we've heard uh, previously. The song kind of reminds me of like a band that would be playing like at the county fair. And I don't mean this as a negative. Like, I don't mean this as it's, it's bad to play at the county fair. But it has a little bit more of a, like an up-tempo country kind of sound to it. And on one hand, I, I appreciate it. You know, I can see that. And I can hear that if I'm like at the county fair or whatever, walking down the rows. Someone's trying to get me to throw some balls at some, some things on the side. And you know, it's not going to, you know, some bowling balls. And you know, the bowling balls are glued together. Or the bowling pins, I should say. And there's cotton candy, there's fried Oreos. Like, I'm getting the imagery in my head. It's just, that's all I kind of hear it as. I kind of hear it as a background track at a county fair. That, that, there's nothing really. Some of the riffing that comes in later from Buckingham's nice. Yeah, I think it's, it's perfectly passable, but a little bit, um, a little bit flying under the radar compared to the rest of the album here. Uh, lyrically. I don't want to know the reasons why love keeps right on walking down the line. I don't want to stand between you and love. Honey, I just want you to feel fine. I don't want to know the reasons why love keeps right on walking down the line. I don't want to stand between you and love. Honey, I just want you to feel fine. Finally, baby, the truth has come down now. Take a listen to your spirit. It's crying out loud. Trying to believe. Oh, you say you love me, but you don't know. You got me rocking and reeling. There's... There's some love triangles, spider webs going on. <laughs> I don't want to know the reasons why love keeps right on walking down the line. I don't want to stand between you and love, honey. I just want you to feel fine. I don't want to get in the way between your relationship. But... <laughs> Finally, baby, the truth has been told. Now you tell me that I'm crazy. It's nothing I didn't know. I'm trying to survive. Oh, you say you love me, but you don't know. You got me rocking and reeling. Everyone's going back and forth and the relationships and the emotions are running like really, really high. There's too much swaying going on. You know, there's too much romantic swaying going on. <laughs> Looking on Wikipedia, uh, it says that this song uh, was written by Stevie Nicks, uh, who wrote this track, I guess, when she and Lindsay Buckingham were performing as a duo. Buckingham Nicks. Hey, perfect, perfect way to put their names together. Uh, the other band members decided to use this song as a replacement for, I guess, Silver Springs. Which I think Silver Springs would sound a lot better uh, on here, to be honest. That's just my, my personal opinion. Uh, and then it says, at first, Nyx was angry and did not want to cooperate with the recording, but ultimately she relented, unhappy with the prospect of only having two songwriting credits on the album. It's alright. It's alright. It's inoffensive. I think that's, like, the best way to put this song. It's, it's inoffensive. I wish that Silver Springs would have been uh, on the album, actually. All right, let's move on to the next track, which is Oh Daddy. Oh, 
daddy He soothed me with his smile Coming off the worst song on the album is possibly the best song on the album. That, Oh Daddy? Hold on, no, 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 hold on, let me talk. Oh Daddy, that was the best track on the album. Maybe, maybe, hold on, let me, I'm jumping to conclusions, but oh my God. Once again, we get Christine McVie, like she is on top of it all. You got organ, you got this quaint little guitar that builds up quietly and wonderfully in the background, and then this little synth line that just weaves itself in and out like a magic carpet ride amongst the stars. Yes, the heavy dramatic uh, piano chords. Yes, passionate singing. Yes, like this track has everything. Singing with emotion and care. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And then you even had a little bit of like a solo or something going on at the very end here. Amongst organ. There's just a one, that's like, that's like melodically the jigsaw pieces coming together. Like that is what I'm talking about. This is a great track. I know Dreams and The Chain and all the other songs. Yeah, yeah, like those are good, but like I've never, as far as I know, I've never seen anyone talk about Oh Daddy. This is, this is the song we need to hear. I love how quiet and subtle everything builds. It's as if it's being played in the back of like a rehearsal studio. Like, this is what I mean. This is what I mean. It sounds like the band, before a show perhaps, are kind of warming up. Away from the glamour, away from the crowds, away from the lights, they're in the background. Just them unto themselves. Them and their instruments, and they're just making a song. This feels born naturally. This doesn't sound like a track that they sat down and wrote. I'm sure they did. But this just has a kind of, for lack of a better word, it has a youthful sound to it. And not necessarily youth in time, but youth in the age of the band, youth in the musicianship. And I mean that in the passion that they have. It sounds just like born out of their own heated creativity that oh daddy yeah 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 now that is a song it says here that christine mcvee wrote oh daddy for the band's drummer mick fleetwood at the time fleetwood was the only father in the band with two daughters i like that let's actually look at the lyrics before i look at the facts <laughs> let me look at this oh daddy you know you make me cry how can you love me i don't understand why oh daddy if i can make you see if there's been a fool around it's got to be me Oh, Daddy, you soothe me with your smile. You're letting me know you're the best thing in my life. Oh, Daddy, if I can make you see, if there's been a fool around, it's got to be me. Why are you right when I'm so wrong? I'm so weak, but you're so strong. Everything you do is just all right, and I can't walk away from you, baby, if I tried. I mean, just as we kind of read, this is kind of like a homage uh, to him, perhaps as a father. And she's watching everything that he's doing. And she's just like, man, look at that dad strength. <laughs> look at that dad love. You know? Oh, daddy, you soothe me with your smile. You're letting me know you're the best thing in my life. That is really, really cool. I like that. I like how she kind of wrote it for Mick Fleetwood and, and fatherhood, basically. Uh, it also says that uh, Fleetwood has described the song as one of his favorites of all time. Both Lindsay Ham's former girlfriend, Carol Ann Harris, and Stevie Nicks' biographer, Zoe Howe, have written that the song was originally written for the band's lighting director, who McVie had been dating at the time. I mean, regardless of who's it, who it's about, that's, this is, this is a classic. Love the way that heavy chord comes in. The rising harmonies, like sunlight, just dripping down on top of the song, like a good caramel glaze. Absolutely. Hey, if you don't mind, let's go ahead and listen to the last track here on the album. Hope that you guys have been having a good time listening to it. This would be Gold Dust Woman. Let's go!
just like that. Rumors is over. Gold Dust Woman, I love the ending of this track. When we get into this rolling tom uh, outro, the way the guitar rises from the previous empty atmospheric spaces of this western vibe, and then it moves into this kind of more frantic pace. I really like what Buckingham's doing there. I like the mantra that's being repeated. Gold Dust Woman, uh, Black Widow, she says something, yeah, Black Widow, Pale Shadow of a Dragon. It, it builds this kind of mystique around the ending of this album and the ending of this track. It makes me really, really, <laughs> really wish that they would have carried on in like, man, it makes me want more. Which, listen, in show business, right, that's what you want to do. You want to leave them wanting more, and for sure it does. I love that change that occurs uh, halfway through in Gold Dust Woman, where it becomes that. Because listen to the contrast of the emptiness in atmospheric space. Comes from here. This. Very Western. I love how the cowbell really is like the mainstay of the rhythm. It is the rhythmic heartbeat around which everything else is built. The strikes of the calm guitar lead up into something. But it really is from that middle point right in here. That things begin to change. I love that brand of mystical mantra that's being repeated there and the way that the music kicks up around it. It kind of takes that calm atmosphere and literally even through the music distorts that and begins to change it and makes it feel like it's a living, breathing and writhing uh, life form, a living organism, the way it changes there. Mmm. Mmm. Man, that, that makes me really, really wish that that was expanded or built upon or something because they had something really, really awesome there at the end. I really enjoyed that. Uh, nice track to end out the album. Great part to fill out the album at the end there. I really, man, that makes me really, really want something else. Let's talk about the lyrics though on this, this one. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. Rock on gold dust woman. Take your silver spoon, dig your grave. Mm. Take your silver spoon, you're built, born with a silver spoon in your mouth, use that to dig your grave. Heartless challenge, pick your path and I'll pray. Wake up in the morning, see your sunrise, loves to go down. Lousy lovers pick their prey, but they never cry out loud. Uh, cry out. Well, did she make you cry? Make you break down? Shatter your illusions of love? And it is over now? Do you know how? Pick up the pieces and go home. So... I feel like just because of, you know, kind of beginning to understand the intimacy and the intricacies between all the band members here and the relationships, this could be from one band member to another directly, or it could be more of an introspective take, just given the perspective from outside, like an out-of-body, not experience, but perspective, looking at yourself, but from another viewpoint. Perhaps they're talking about themselves as the gold dust woman, or like I said, they could be actually talking about someone else. Rock on, ancient queen, follow those who pale in your shadow. Rulers make bad lovers. You better put your kingdom up for sale. <laughs> they say, you're a bad lover. <laughs> um, oh, pale shadow of a woman, black widow, pale shadow of a dragon. Like you used to be something, but now you're kind of nothing. Even the song title, Gold Dust Woman, and at the end, all she sings is Dust Woman. You lost your gold perhaps. Uh, let's see what the actual meaning here is. It says in an interview that Nix confirmed that gold dust was a metaphor for cocaine. Everyone, everyone was doing a little bit. We never bought it or anything. It was just around and I think I had a serious flash of what this stuff could be, of what it could do to you. And I imagine that it could overtake everything. I must have met a couple of people that I thought did too much coke and I must have been impressed by that because I made it into a whole story. Okay, so it seems like she's actually using this as like drug addiction. Basically, at first I thought it was more relationship-wise, but it seems that it's actually drug addiction, basically. So maybe the first line where she says, Gold dust woman, take your silver spoon, dig your grave. Gold dust, because there's a certain luxuriousness to it, a certain luxury attached to cocaine at the time. Take that silver spoon, dig your grave. Like, you can afford it, yeah. And it, you know, all the rich people are doing it, sure. But you're going to use that, it's going to take you down. Nix also offers some further insight into the song's meaning. Gold Dust Woman was my kind of symbolic look at somebody going through a bad relationship, going and doing lots of drugs and trying to make it, trying to live, just trying to get through that. So you kind of get like a almost, not mentorship behind this, but 
someone who's gone through all of these experiences talking to someone else who's maybe new to these experiences and saying, well, did she make you cry? Make you break down, shatter your illusions of love? Like you're going through all this and I hate to say it, but this is kind of part of the business. This is kind of part, uh, I've gone through it and now I see that you're going through it. Thank you guys so much for listening to the album with me. I hope that you enjoyed it. I know that it wasn't like something hugely requested or anything like that, but I, I, one, I wanted to listen to this album and two, I thought it would be a nice surprise. You know, I thought it'd be kind of, kind of random to toss it out there. So hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you did, you can let me know in the comments or even if you didn't, you might've hated this. Let me know in the comments. Uh, you can like the video if you want, share the video. You can subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter. You can support the channel on Patreon. Uh, my two favorite songs as well, my favorite songs as of right now are Songbird, Dreams, and Oh Daddy. Oh Daddy's really good. Least favorite song is I Don't Want to Know. At least right now. You know, so this is all first listen, right? <laughs> it can all change. So let me know your favorite songs as well and your least favorite. But otherwise, I hope that you enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your morning, the rest of your night. And uh, come back tomorrow. Who knows what we're doing, but I'm sure to be sure to be sufficient. <laughs> Have a wonderful one, guys. I'll see you later. Bye.